It's been a busy day here at the 49ers facility. John Lynch's pre-draft press conference talked about Trey Lance, the trade rumors there. Also talked about Brandon Ayuk and some of the trade rumors there. Draft is coming up on Thursday, so this is the final day before then that I'll be here in the facility. But let's talk a little bit about what John Lynch said. First of all, he said that a lot of the Trey Lance rumors, there's a lot of smoke there, which... I think that we all, you know, reasonably could have surmised when the Ian Rappaport report came out. It's other teams calling the 49ers, not the 49ers proactively calling themselves because they're just not in position to lose quarterback talent at this point, given the uncertainty regarding Brock Purdy's return timetable, unless they are paid heavily for it, right? So right now, Trey Lance is more valuable to the 49ers than he is to any other team. If somebody calls up the 49ers and says, hey, here are two or three first round picks for Trey Lance. Does that change the calculus? Of course it does. But that's not going to happen given Lance's inexperience, given the fact that he's still looking to prove himself, given all these injuries. And right now you look at the 49ers, they had to add Sam Darnold to the QB room because they're not sure when Brock Purdy is going to return. By the way, John Lynch gave an update on Brock Purdy's progress, and he said that he's checking the milestones that he needs to check. But still, we won't really know more until early June at the, the, the very soonest because Brock Purdy has to start throwing again before the 49ers can develop a solid timetable. So for right now, insulation of that quarterback room, QB depth, QB option power is what's most important to the 49ers, which is why, you know, they're not talking as if responses to some of these trade discussions are, are imminent. And John Lynch implied that uh, there is a little less substance behind some of those reports than, than it might seem through social media, which can take a report like Ian Rapp reports and just run it through an echo chamber and make it seem a lot bigger than it actually is. I think a similar thing has happened with Brandon Ayuk. And, you know, with Ayuk, Lynch talked about it as well. He, he did mention you can't keep everybody forever, but this is all stuff that we have repeated. And, you know, it's I would say that it is validating when John Lynch goes up there and I have all my team building theories and I try to connect the dots of what the 49ers are doing. And then John Lynch goes up there and he essentially affirms that that's how the 49ers operate. He said that Brandon Ayuk is in the 49ers long-term plans, but you can't keep everybody forever. He essentially said that Brandon Ayuk, this year, if he could put up another 1,000-yard receiving season, Brandon Ayuk can cement himself as part of the 49ers' core. And if you cement yourself as part of this team's A-list core, they will pay you. It's the difference between A-listers who the 49ers pay and the salary cap is growing every year, so you dish out that cash to Debo Samuel, to Nick Bosa this offseason, to Fred Warner you're willing to pay those guys, it's the B-listers who you replace through the draft and through second-level free agency if you get guys at a bargain bin rate. But the draft is the most cost-effective way of doing business, and the 49ers have 11 picks starting this weekend. Their first pick is slated to come at number 99 on Friday. But John Lynch straight up said that Brandon Ayuk has a chance to become one of the 49ers' core players for a long time to come. And it, it sounds like that's going to be determined this year. Brandon, they have to decide on Brandon Ayuk's fifth-year option by Monday. That's the deadline. They're not going to announce Ayuk's uh, and, and Javon Kinlaw's fifth-year option decisions until Monday. If you know, I, I think it's obvious the 49ers are going to pick up Ayuk's and and decline Javon Kinlaw's. But that fifth year, you know, once a player plays that fifth year, in Mike McGlinchey's case, the 49ers were trying to trade him. They've already talked about that during that fifth year. Once a player is suited up on the roster for that fifth year option, you have a really good idea of what his future with the football team is going to be. The 49ers are an organization that really does try to plan in advance when it comes to these contract mechanisms. So with McGlinchey, they knew that he wasn't going to be around past year five, but he did play out year five. With Brandon Ayuk, I don't think that they 100% know yet, but they definitely want him to be around. They, I mean, what 
team in, in its right mind wouldn't want Brandon Ayuk to deliver another 1,000-yard season to be as good as he was last year. If he stacks that season on, uh, if he stacks an, another one of those seasons on top of his 2022 performance, the 49ers will gladly open up the checkbook for Brandon Ayuk. They'll enter that fifth-year option season uh, with, with him under contract, and, and they'll use it to negotiate an extension. The salary cap is growing every year. But there's no reason to eliminate options sooner than you have to. And I think that's where the 49ers are standing right now in terms of Brandon Ayuk. If somebody shows up and offers a ransom for Brandon Ayuk, of course, you think about it. You also think about what might happen this year if he gets hurt or if he doesn't play as well as he did in 2022. You let things develop organically. And John Lynch, the way that he spoke today, he talked about organically letting Trey Lance's situation play out. The 49ers need to see more from him. Organically letting Brandon Ayuk's situation play out. Allow the option power to take hold. The 49ers have built a lot of option power. That's how they've maintained flexibility with what's a really good roster. I know that social media has a hard time processing that because it's a nuanced way of approaching things. But it, you know, if I have to, I'll talk about it here for several minutes like I am right now to explain how the 49ers are doing business. John Lynch also said that John Feliciano, the 49ers uh, offensive lineman who they signed, he, he was a center last year. He played a lot of center for the New York Giants, started at center for most of the season. John Feliciano is going to be competing for a starting spot at guard. It does sound like the 49ers' preferred option is to have Spencer Burford win that right guard spot at guard, uh, right guard job, starting job, so that Feliciano could be in a Daniel Brunskill-like role. But I would keep an eye on that as this season moves along. Lynch didn't talk all too much about other roster dynamics. He did say that Joan Kinlaw, who's been working out here, has been looking good for the 49ers. We did speak to players, Eric Armstead, the big Kings fan, Eric Armstead, since he's a Sacramento native, uh, plans to remain a defensive tackle. There's been, again, some premature speculation online about Eric Armstead moving to defensive end now that the 49ers got Javon Hargrave. Uh, that's not in the plans, guys. They want Armstead. He's good at tackle. He's best at tackle. They want him paired up with Hargrave on the inside. They want Javon Kinlaw to be a rotational piece behind both of those guys. That's what Armstead was talking about today. I, I'd seen some speculation that Armstead had slimmed down online. It's not true. I was standing right next to Eric Armstead today. He looks the same as he did last year. Christian McCaffrey reunited with his teammate Sam Darnold. I have an article coming out on Christian McCaffrey tomorrow morning, so I'll talk a little bit more about that probably in a video tomorrow. But newly engaged Christian McCaffrey, he is on site learning that 49ers playbook from two running backs coaches, Bobby Turner and Anthony Lynn. Christian said that he wants to not only know the running backs playbook, but he wants to know everything. He wants to know what all 11 guys are doing on the field. Last year was a crash course. This year, he's trying to get really, really deep into it. We didn't talk to any of the quarterbacks today. I know that uh, I mentioned in a video earlier that Brock Purdy talked to the Kelsey brothers. Trey Lance talked to a North Dakota State reporter. Trey Lance has been fully cleared. So at some point this offseason, we will talk to Trey Lance. But uh, for the time being, those are the updates on, on the front of Trey Lance. Fred Warner also spoke, and so did 49ers center Jake Rendell. Anyway, that's the update here from Levi Stadium today. I think we covered everything from Trey Lance to Brandon Ayuk to everything in between. Beautiful sunny day here in the Bay Area. More soon coming this week. Obviously a lot from San Francisco tomorrow. I'll be out and about in the city, get some good scenery, talk some good 49ers football. Sacramento on Wednesday, I'm going to Warriors-Kings game five. So uh, some coverage is going to be coming from there. And then the NFL draft back here in Santa Clara begins on Thursday with the 49ers slated to pick on Friday for the first time here in the 2023 event. All right, everybody like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.